it's me again. Uh, this time, I wanted to talk about something that a lot of people dismiss completely in RC, uh, but I think still has some value. So, this week we're going to talk about aerodynamics. Why is this important in RC? The reason I think this is important in RC is because we have uh, wings in the cars. With these wings, we can generate uh, downforce to the car and with that more grip. So let's now go through the theory behind aerodynamics. How does it work? What even is it? And how do we use it? So what it is, it's how the air moves around an object. So for example, a wing or something moves the air around differently than a block. So let's start out by the most common example, uh, an airplane wing. So what do we want to achieve with an airplane wing? We want to achieve the fact that it's pushing air downwards and by doing that it would be pushing the wing upwards and raising the plane. So to achieve this we have a few different methods. One method is to produce a higher pressure zone below the wing than what's on top of the wing. Another thing is to change the speeds of the air flowing on top of the wing and below the wing. Now, to simplify this, let's uh, imagine an, uh, just a straight uh, object like a paper or something. When you would uh, tilt it so that it would be tilted towards the airflow, it would be pushed upwards. If it would be tilted the opposite way, uh, it would be pushed downwards. This is just because in these two different scenarios, uh, in one of them, the pressure is higher on top of the paper and lower below it and in the other one it's lower on top of the paper and higher below the paper. Okay, so then the speed of the air. The speed of the air going on top of the wing and below the wing can be adjusted by the profile of the wing. So a profile that has a longer top uh, portion of the wing will make the air go faster on top of the wing, which is something that creates a lower pressure and we can have a lift on the wing. If we didn't have this, we would not get this advantage and also we would have the disadvantage of creating turbulent air behind the wing which would cause the air to spin around and create a lot of drag. And this is also why airplane, airplane wings can stall when you have too much angle on them or the profile is too aggressive. Okay, so how do we put this into cars? Because we don't want to create lift, we want to create downforce. Lift is something that's pushing the air downwards and pulling the wing upwards. And downforce is the exact opposite. It's pushing the air upwards and the wing downwards. So pretty much what we need to do is flip the wing around and put it in an angle so that we would have more pressure on top of the wing than we have below the wing. So now we can create a force that's pushing the wing downwards and if the wing is attached to a car it's pushing the car downwards which adds load to the car which puts more pressure on the tires which creates more grip. Okay so I hope you're still with me. Uh, there's a lot of different things uh, to aerodynamics but this is the very very basics and uh, these are the things that you can see on all racing cars and they have these things uh, thought out. Okay so why is aerodynamics important in racing cars. It is important because this is a way that we can uh, keep the mass of the car the same but we could still achieve more load on the tires by uh, achieving downforce that pushing the car downwards. So it's pretty much like a free grip. <laughs> uh, only downside to this is drag. But in RC drag isn't that big of a concern. In full-size race cars, drag is much bigger of an issue because uh, a lot of the power is maximized. In RC, we almost always have even too much power. So the drag isn't that big of a deal. So we can maximize downforce without getting that much of the downsides. Now you might be thinking that downforce is amazing. I can have more grip, no mass added, and uh, there's no downsides. The drag is uh, not that big of a deal. Well. In RC, especially in off-road, the biggest downside to aerodynamics is the fact that we have bumps. So a lot of the times we might not actually want the car to be pushed into the bumps. 
and the downforce in your car would do exactly this. So this is something to consider when you think about aerodynamics in RC. If we would be driving on road, then yeah, you would have to, you would want to maximize your downforce. There's no doubt about it. But uh, in off road, sometimes you want less downforce. So let's go ahead and look at some full scale examples because we have the opportunity to look at them and see what they did and figure out what we can do in RC. The best place to look at for some aerodynamic advice would be from Formula 1. The whole sport is controlled by aerodynamic design. Uh, that's the most dominant thing and really, really determines what makes a good car. So let's start by looking at the F1 cars today. So here's uh, Red Bull uh, from 2019. And you can see that the design is very complex. And uh, to me, the reason I wanted to start out with this is to show that the aerodynamic design in F1 at the moment is very advanced and uh, it focuses a lot on the underbody of the car and not a lot of what's happening over the car. That's why I think we should focus on other examples more uh, than this one because I don't think we can get much out of this one for RC. Let's start out by looking at one of the most dominant cars in F1. It wasn't most dominant because of its aero, but it still had some good aerodynamic things in it. So here we can see we have the rear wing with a pretty sizable uh, end plates and a pretty basic front wing with a pretty big end plates as well. And the whole car on the other hand is pretty streamlined and uh, yeah, nothing too crazy going on. So this is a very good example. You want the front wing to push the front of the car down, you want a streamlined design to reduce the drag, and you want a rear wing to push the rear of the car down. Uh, nothing too crazy, and they have very simple style wings. Then let's look at a slightly more advanced car. From 1994, uh, Benetton, Michael Schumacher won the championship. This car has a lot more stuff going on. So front wing still pretty a simple design. But you can see here a lot of the airflow is being directed uh, below the car. Uh, there must be something happening in the underbody of the car. We can't see it from this picture, but already they're starting to do a lot of stuff below the car. Overall though, the streamline thing is still uh, pretty consistent with the McLaren. There's nothing too crazy going on uh, apart from the multi-layer rear wing. Uh, but there's not many winglets or anything too crazy happening here. So this is then probably the most craziest era of F1 uh, in terms of aero because of the fact that a lot of the winglets were allowed. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, in today's cars there's still a lot of stuff going on but a lot of it is going under the car and much of the winglets on top of the car are now not allowed. And here you can see there's a single layer rear wing with uh, the front wing being, I think this is a double layer. And then there's a lot of stuff happening here uh, at the rear end of the car. So the front end generates a lot of grip with the front wing. And then a lot of the grip is generated with the floor of the car. And then a, a big ton of the rear grip is generated by the rear wing as well as these winglets here. The winglet here is trying to guide air over the rear tire. This is to achieve less turbulence in the rear, uh, which would cause less drag, as well as more downforce due to the fact that turbulence also reduces downforce uh, when it's around the rear wing. You can see this effect even better on the Renault. So the big issue in open wheel racing is the fact that the tires cause a major part of the turbulence. And uh, in F1, they don't allow closed tires. So this style of putting a winglet on the side of the car to guide air over the tires uh, is a way to minimize that turbulent air around the tires. Apart from all of that, uh, F1 cars don't have a lot of suspension. They don't have any bumps. And also, they're never going sideways. In off-road, a lot of times we're going sideways. And uh, in F1, the car never slides, or if it does, something has gone wrong. So. Let's instead look at rally cars. I know these are closed wheel, but we can still learn something from these. So let's start out with a quick look at how the cars look. So here's a Toyota Yaris uh, 
from 2019. A lot of guiding the air happening in the front and then a lot of guiding the air around the tires as well. So trying to get air away from the tires, reduce the turbulent air and also create some downforce in the front with the splitter as well as these wings on the side guiding air over the tire. Then in the rear, a rear wing to generate grip on the rear. As in the front we have the windshield that generates the front downforce. Uh, here's a look at a Hyundai, a very similar design, nothing major that's different. And here is a Ford a Fiesta and uh, again pretty similar design. There's still a one difference in these cars, uh, at least there was when these cars came out in 2017. This was the rear wing. A lot of the manufacturers uh, didn't have enough courage to build a huge rear wing, but Toyota did build a huge rear wing. So let's take a closer look at what the uh, Toyota wing looked like. Okay, so here's a look at the rear wing. We can see that there's two layers on it. The higher portion is slightly over the roof of the car, so the air on top of the car will go there and the air flowing around the roof of the car will go down and flow from the bottom portion of the wing. So it looks like a pretty simple design. But what's actually uh, really cool about this wing is the fact that the side of the wing is huge. So there's a lot of area on the side. This is especially good in rallying because a lot of the times the cars aren't going straight. Just like in off-road in RC, a lot of the times the cars are sliding slightly. So here they solve the issue of having a lot of aero going straight and then losing that aero once the car starts to slide. By making the side of the wing so big that when the car starts to slide it will push the rear end down anyway. So this is a cool design and this is why in RC we have a pretty sizable uh, end plates on our wings and uh, also why there's a rule that the end plates cannot be too big. Even these rally cars miss one thing. These rally cars are really low and uh, a lot of the aero comes from the rear diffuser, comes from uh, guiding air away from the tires. We cannot really do these things because our ride height is really high as well as the fact that our tires are open. We really cannot do much guiding the air around them uh, except for trying to create winglets uh, in the body to try to uh, put the aero over the tires or something like that. And also uh, they miss the most important part that I mentioned before which is the handling over bumps. F1 cars definitely don't go over huge bumps and uh, rally cars go over bumps yes but the bumps are way way smaller than we have in RC. But even though these cars don't take the bumps into account uh, we can still look at the aero on its own and try to recreate in RC to create the maximum amount of aero. If the track is not that bumpy we can use the maximum amount of aero without having too much disadvantages. So I think even though it's not a perfect representation of uh, how the aero would work in RC it still gives us good advice on what we probably should look at when we try to design aero in an RC car. So in the next video we're gonna go see how the RC manufacturers have taken aero into account through the 30 year history of 8 scale racing and we're going to look at the design of the wing, design of the body uh, as well as if there's something else that uh, some people have come up with. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, until next time. Alright, I hope you liked that video. If indeed I did actually help you out, please let me know by writing a comment down below. Also, if you like my type of content, feel free to like my Facebook page as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share with your friends in social media. Now, if you think I was wrong about something in this video, please let me know. I'll go through all the comments and I'm really open to differing opinions and I really want to just spark up a conversation. So with all that, until next time.